snow has me thinking football and the Bengals top draft pick has me all psyched up for the start of the season. Georgetown uh, make that Georgia's three time all American defensive end David Pollock who will be groomed to play outside linebacker for the Bengals. Pollock may be the best player in the entire draft. He brings us an outstanding uh, pass rusher from that position. A guy at 260 pounds uh, uh, who can really is a fine, fine athlete. He had uh, measurable times like cornerbacks and wide receivers uh, in a lot of the drill work. And uh, so he uh, uh, just a tremendous hard work and smart. And uh, so uh, he brings the, the full package. Pollock sets Georgia's school record with 36 career sacks. Last season, the 6'2", 281-pounder recorded 52 tackles. He won the most prestigious awards, including the nation's outside lineman, uh, defensive player, and defensive impact player of the year. He was SEC defensive player of the year in 02 and 04, and AP player of the year for 02. And despite his individual honors, Pollock is a team player who has tremendous leadership skills. I do consider this couple of years every honor. I've been a leader really in uh, in growing up in all two sports. Just uh, I think guys that, that bust their butt, practice hard, and uh, are, in, are in, put themselves in the right positions at the right time, and don't do uh, things that make them, you know, things out of the ordinary, go out and get in trouble and stuff like that. I think you naturally, as you develop and become a good player, you naturally take on leadership roles, and that's something that I've, I've always loved doing. Pollock's teammate at Georgia inside linebacker Odell Thurman winds up as the Bengals' second-round pick, and they could be playing next to each other. The last time the Bengals drafted teammates, TJ and Chad, back in 01, the 6-foot, 233-pound Thurman shows very good initial power and pop. He posted 65 tackles and four block punts, but has some character issues. Suspended for the first three games of last season, which overall may make Thurman a stronger person. The kid has overcome some things in his life and, and really gone through some tough times and, uh, you know, has risen to the top and the way he's handled himself uh, throughout this whole process of doing the background checks and all that stuff has been commendable to him as well. But I'm excited. I mean, he's a, he's a true talent and, uh, I mean, we're really lucky to get him here at this pick. The Bengals' final pick of the day in the third round, West Virginia wide receiver Chris Henry. Last season, he had 611 yards, 12 touchdowns. The 6'4", 197-pound Henry has excellent size, and along with Chad and TJ, can stretch the defenses. But he only played two seasons. Twice was suspended uh, last year, and he's leaving school a year early. But he was Big East Rookie of the Year two years ago. But I would never argue with Marvin's gamble. Tomorrow, the Bengals will have four more picks as the NFL draft resumes at 11 o'clock. We'll have all the Bengals' choices for you tomorrow night at 6.30. Now, some local players picked. Ohio State kicker Mike Nugent heads to the Jets in the second round, 47th overall. The second OSU draftee, safety Dustin Fox, goes to the Vikings, 80th overall. The Colts grab UK and Vincent Sweet P. Burns in the third round. And finally, in the last hour, Maurice Claret gets the call from the Denver Broncos as he ends the third round, number 101. As for the Bengals, quarterback is not the problem. They went looking to plug some holes on defense in the draft. And as they sat and waited behind 16 teams this afternoon, they got some help because only three of the top 10 names off the board were defensive players. Now, the Bengals liked Thomas Davis, but he was gone at 14. So three picks later, Marvin Lewis took a player he says he's been impressed with for three years. And it started a run by the Bengals on Georgia Bulldogs. If they fix this defense, the Bengals fix this defense, watch out hey. this year. It was just over three and a half hours in, with Aaron Rodgers still on hold and more than a few top defensive players still on the board when the Bengals' first pick went to the podium. David Pollock, defensive end for Georgia. Announced as a defensive end, Marvin Lewis was quick to point out he expects Pollock to play outside linebacker and be a pass rusher on third down. But the Bengals coaches wouldn't pin a position on Pollock as easily as they agreed on a description. He is a football player. Without a doubt that David Pollock is a football player. He's been a guy who, who has worked extremely hard. He's not been afraid uh, to uh, bring other people with him and, uh, you know, kind of separates himself by leading by example. And if you're not going at his speed, he's going to run you over. As you develop and become a good player, you naturally take on leadership roles. And that's something that I've, I've always loved doing. I like starting at the bottom and, and my working my way up. At 6'2", 260 pounds, there have been some concerns about Pollock's size as a pass rusher. 
but as a junior at Georgia, he did beef up to 280 and had his least productive season. A guy at 260 pounds uh, uh, who can really is a fine, fine athlete. He had uh, measurable times like cornerbacks and wide receivers uh, in a lot of the drill work. In the second round, the Bengals didn't just stick with defense. They went with the same school in taking Pollock's teammate at Georgia, linebacker Odell Thurman. A player Lewis said the team had targeted despite Thurman's rap sheet that includes several arrests and a suspension at Georgia. Things uh, seem to have, uh, you know, checked out. Uh, you know, he had some things early in his career there at Georgia and some unfor one unfortunate thing. And uh, so, um, but, uh, you know, he seemed to overcome these things. We got two good, solid football players and both bring unique characteristics that add to this team. To wrap up day one, the Bengals finally went offense and picked up West Virginia wideout Chris Henry, a third round pick some scouts say has first round talent. In two years with the Mountaineers, the 6'4 Henry scored 22 touchdowns, but was suspended from the team twice. The draft goes four more rounds, and the Bengals have four more picks on Sunday. Now the first three rounds of the draft lasted roughly 10 and a half hours, mm. and perhaps the most intriguing pick was the very last one. With the 38th pick of the third round, the Denver Broncos select Maurice Claret. That's right, despite two years of rust and the Sean Casey-like 40 time at the Combine, the Broncos took a chance that Claret is still the player who helped the Buckeyes win the 2002 National Championship. Since anyone and everyone who runs behind the Broncos line goes for more than 1,000 yards, it's a great break for Claret. In his one year at Ohio State, he rushed for more than 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns. Here's a quick look at the top 10 picks. The 49ers took Utah quarterback Alex Smith. It's the fifth straight year quarterback has gone number one overall. Three of the next four picks were running backs. Ronnie Brown, Cedric Benson, and Cadillac Williams. The exception, Michigan receiver Braylon Edwards, whom the Browns selected number three overall. Cornerback Pac-Man Jones went sixth to Tennessee, followed by wide receiver Troy Williamson, cornerbacks Antrell Roll and Carlos Rogers, and then wide receiver Mike Williams. And here's a look at some of the names from this neck of the woods. How much do the Jets need a kicker? Enough to take Ohio State's Mike Nugent in the second round. Another Buckeye cornerback Dustin Fox went in the third to the Vikings. UK defensive end Vincent Sweet P. Burns is headed for the Colts as the 92nd overall pick. Michael Munoz, son of Bengals Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz, was not drafted on day one. He is expected to be picked tomorrow. And the draft picks up again tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, not too long from now, with rounds four through seven. Still to come tonight. The Bengals are off the clock, and now we are on it. 30 minutes of quality sports information ahead, and that includes analysis of the Bengals draft with our Who Asked You gang. The Reds are part of a fish fry. Highlights of the Marlins matchup are ahead, plus the rest of the day in athletics. All you need to know, you'll get right here. The Bengals had taken an offensive player number one in six of the previous seven drafts. That list includes quarterback Achilles Smith, wide receiver Peter Warwick, offensive tackle Levi Jones, quarterback Carson Palmer, and running back Chris Perry. This year, Marvin Lewis goes defensive with one of the most decorated college players in the country. David Pollock played three different positions at Georgia before earning All-America honors last season. He twice won the Ted Hendricks Award as the nation's top defensive end. He also won the Lombardi Award as the best lineman and set a Bulldogs record with 35 career sacks. Yet Pollock will play linebacker with the Bengals. The level of competition in the SEC, the fact that it was a pro-style defensive approach, adds to the package that he brings to this level in making it an easier transition. You know, the thing that we look for is football players. And as without a doubt that David Pollock is a football player. And, you know, he just... He just makes plays, and he has fun playing the game. And uh, you've got to love his energy. You've got to love his passion. The scouting report says Pollock is a bit of an overachiever. He's a smart player with natural instincts who always seems to be around the ball. The same can be said for most good linebackers. The voice of the Bengals, Brad Johansson's a smart guy as well, and he goes one-on-one -on -one with the Bengals' top pick. Everybody is talking about you moving from one position to another has kind of been your whole career in moving from one position to another. So it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference to you, does it? No, sir. It doesn't matter to me regardless. Um, football is football. 
and I've played a lot of positions. I've played every position in the book since I was six years old. I've played somewhere along the line. I've played every position, and football is football. It's fun. What's your strength? Um, I, you know, I think I know how to play football. I know the game. I have pretty good instincts. Um, tenacity. I'm, I'm, I'm always, um, you know, I'm always persistent. Motors going all the time. Yes, sir. I try to. Um, you know, quick. I got plenty of weaknesses too. I mean. Stuff I got to get better. I got to get better with my pad level, and my hands, and a lot of things. So, uh, as you come into this and you see this team, what do you contribute right off the bat? Well, you know, I, I don't know enough about it. Um, I'm, I'm coming in. I'm the I'm the rookie. You know, I'm the new guy. So, I just got to come in and, and listen to my coaches and and try to fit in where I fit in and wherever that's at. Then I'm, you know, I'm gonna give it everything I got wherever I'm at. There's really no place that you don't feel like you can fit in, is there? No, my mom always says, and everybody says, I never met a stranger. Um, that's why I like people. I like talking to people. I enjoy people a lot. So, I mean, this is, this stuff is fun stuff. I mean, you don't get to do this stuff every day. You only get drafted once. You only get to go to this situation once. So, why not live it up, soak it up? Um, it, Cincinnati it, fans have been great so far too. I was in the bar last night, or not the bar, a restaurant, and um, there's probably you know 25 people that came up and. Yeah, we're, we're glad to have you here. Welcome to Cincinnati. There are people kind of hungry for a winner here. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. It was really cool last night. Uh, personal goals, w what are they? Well, I, I've never been one to be, you know, uh, bashful about what I want to do. You know, um, I want to come in and I want to get rookie of the year. I mean, that's something that I want to come in. I want to start. I want to play. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm a competitive person, and you know, I'm gonna come in and bust my hump, and wherever I fit in, I'm gonna fit in. But you know, I want to come in and play. Thanks, Brad. Middle linebacker Nate Webster tore a tendon in his knee last year. His recovery has been a bit slow. Outside linebacker Kevin Hardy will turn 32 this summer. With their futures in doubt, the Bengals drafted what could be eventual replacements. For the first time in franchise history, the team's top two draft picks come from the same school, Pollock and his Georgia teammate Odell Thurman. Now Thurman started 22 of his 23 games in three seasons at Georgia, where he was known as a run stopper and a tough tackler. Thurman was a semifinalist for the Butkus Award, given to the nation's top linebacker, and earned all SEC first-team accolades from the league's coaches. He, he, he's got the ability to be an every-down linebacker. I mean, where he fits early is still going to be up to him and how we see him fit in and in what we try to do with the people we've got. But he's got the ability to be a, a good football player every down in this league. And in the third round, the Bengals get help for Chad Johnson, six foot four, wide receiver Chris Henry from West Virginia. Size and speed make this guy dangerous. He runs a 4.53 40 yard dash. The guy's a playmaker with 22 touchdowns in 25 games. Interestingly enough, the Bengals were the only team to bring him in for a visit. The knock on Henry is that he needs to mature. But those were the same words which haunted Corey Dillon. Remember, and we know he can play the game. Now the Bengals go defensive and pick college teammates in the first two rounds yesterday. Today in the fourth and fifth rounds, they switch to the offensive side of the ball and again draft two players from the same school in Michigan. With their fourth round pick, the Bengals take center Eric Gajcek out of central Michigan. Despite tipping the scales over 300 pounds, Gajcek is considered an athletic and mobile in addition to high intelligence. He's an excellent run blocker but needs to work on pass protection. Gajcek started 37 games for the Chippewas. And how about a teammate from the same offensive line? In the fifth round and number 153, the Bengals draft tackle Adam Keith, 6'7", 337 pounds. Keith is considered an outstanding drive blocker who helped pave the way for the Chippewas running game. Central Michigan featured a 1,000-yard rusher in each of, his first, uh, each of his four seasons as a starter. Keith was an All-Mac last season. In the sixth round, the Bengals pluck a big, physical, wide receiver, Tab Perry, from UCLA. He's six foot two with excellent hand-eye coordination and strength to power through the jam at the line of scrimmage. Perry is also an outstanding kick returner, but is not the best route runner, nor a deep threat. At the combine at 229, he ran into full fours. I mean, that's, that's a big guy that can move, and, and this is still a big man's game. You know, let's <laughs> make no doubt about that. The big guys still normally win you know, when they're matched up against the little guys. So when you get a big guy that can run fast and do all the other things you like, I, I think it's a pretty good mix. And in the seventh and final round, the team's last pick is American Samoan Jonathan Fanene, a six foot three, 290 pound defensive end, a former JUCO transfer who didn't start until his senior year at Utah. 
Panene is quick and explosive. He can also bench over 400 pounds. However, he's undersized and is slow shedding blocks. Here's Marvin Lewis on the new players. We're very pleased with how the last two days have unfolded. Um, I think we not only uh, improved our football team with athleticism and uh, ability to make football plays, but with youth and uh, uh, without, I don't think, varying too far from where our grades were, we're able to also uh, put some people in positions of need for us as we go forward in the future. Time for you now at home to make the call. We want you to grade the Bengals draft, A through F. Give us your initial thoughts. Call 345-1212. It's free. We'll have results later in the show. Now, Marvin was hoping to add depth to the safety position, but players the Bengals valued were already taken. He said he talked to backup cornerbacks Reggie Miles and Terrell Roberts about moving to safety in training camp. So how did they do with the picks? Skinny, Goheen will tell us exactly how the Bengals did. It's coming up right after this. Give us your initial thoughts. Call 345-1212. It's free. We'll have results later in the show. Welcome back. Moeller's Michael Munoz, the offensive tackle from Tennessee, was not drafted this weekend. He is looking to sign a free agent contract, and we may have word on Munoz tomorrow. Lebanon alum Jordan Hicks, a defensive lineman at Georgetown College, signs with Oakland. And Highlands quarterback Gino Gadulli, who started four years at UC, has signed a three-year deal with Tennessee. His father, Dave, says... It's a great, great situation for Geno. The only two quarterbacks on the Titans roster are Steve McNair and Billy Volick. Of course, the new offensive coordinator there is Norm Chow. As for other locals, UC defensive end Trent Cole is selected by the Eagles in the fifth round, number 146 overall. The very next pick, the Chiefs grab Miami corner Alfonso Hodge. Late in the third in the round, number 173, the Colts snap outside linebacker Taiwan Hagler, a three-year starter at UC. With a first pick in the seventh round, the Niners take UC corner Davin Holly. And Mississippi fullback Rick Rosano, the Milford native, is drafted by the Bucks at number 221. He is the son of the former Bengals linebacker, Rick Rosano. So, what to make of the Bengals draft? We have a few guys in the studio to dissect and divulge. So let's toss it over to Brad Johansson for who asked you? Oh, Brad. Harvey, thank you very much. Let's break it down. Richard Skinner, 1360 Homer, the Sports Animal. Kevin Goheen, Cincinnati Post. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in. You want to give us the overall grade? That's our poll question. How'd they do? I'm going to go B minus. Uh, you know, and, and uh, obviously safety would have been nice, and, and who knows what would have happened if Thomas Davis would have been on the board in all, in all likelihood. And would in you all, have picked him first? Uh, if he'd have been available, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, because it, it... You and everybody else. Yeah, I know. That's right. I mean, that's why, <laughs> that's why he probably went two or three spots earlier right. than, than what he was projected to go. You know, obviously the offensive lineman from, from the Mac schools and back-to-back -back picks, I know that's one, especially from the same Mac school, is going to probably raise everybody's eyebrow until they, you know, until they're able to pull it off and, and do it at the at the, uh, the NFL level. And, you know, I guess you, you get one wide receiver. Do you really need another one? I mean, good gracious. Can you can you keep going wide receiver depth? And do you need that much depth of wide receiver? Obviously, so, scores a little bit higher. Yeah. So you get B minus. Where do you go, Kev? Incomplete until they get out on the field. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 you I'm, have I'm, to I'm give a grade old, now. I'm old school. Come on, cop out, man. <sighs> I, I give them a B. I, I, I like what they've done. What they've done is given themselves a lot of versatility. Um, the, the whole wide receiver and, and uh, linebacker, all they've done is create competition. They've sent messages out that, you know, particularly at wide receiver, I think Kelly Washington, uh, you still have question marks with Peter Warwick's health. Uh, they have set themselves up for success later on, be it this year, next year, and all they've done is, is just made sure that they're not going to take steps backwards. I'll tell you what, after talking to David Pollack, this is a too-good-to-be-true kid. <laughs> he is, in every sense, the kind of guy that you want, not only on your football team, in your family. This is a class act and an unbelievable pick at, seven, at 17. Yeah, and, you know, getting a chance in, in covering Kentucky, as I did for the, for the Post, I got a chance to see him play in person a couple different times. And, you know, he's a great, great athlete. You know, there's a guy that they used in fullback situations on the goal line for Georgia. Uh, you know, the, you know, a lot of people rejected the fact that he might be able to play if you really pushed it inside linebacker at the NFL sure. level. And truth be told, if he put his hand down and had to play end, defensive I, tackle I, or yeah. Defensive yeah, I think end. he could play any of those positions. And that's, that's a great versatile guy I mean, guy this to is have. a kid yeah. who's run from 240 to 290 and back again. Again, he's at 275 he, now and he, says he I'll come us, back at 250. He told us today he plans on being back at 250. Wow. So, uh, again, that's all, that's all the versatility. Um, heard stories of, about him at, at 
practices at Georgia where they had to keep him off the special teams practices. I mean, he, he'd be in on, on uh, kick blocks, and he's, and he's uh, you know, extending full, full extension out to block kicks in practice. Right. This is a, this is a three-time, you know, uh, three-year starter, All-American. Yeah. And, and, and he's billboard face. Line. This is the guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is the guy. Odell Thurman. Let's let's go with the number two pick because you go with another Georgia guy. You're OK with it. But obviously there are some people who say there may be some issues with him. Well, yeah, the off the field issues, I guess, whatever those might be. But, you know, and, and it's interesting. Uh, you know, we were talking about this on the radio this morning. If this had been pre Marvin drafts and this had been the Bengals taking two Talked guys from the same years, school and the same mm -hmm. thing, two guys from Central Michigan. How many jokes would we be making today that, oh, they just saved money and decided when they were looking at one guy, you might as well look at another, and they take those guys. They save money in the end. But, as but Kevin you said, know going into this, they yeah. love the Georgia defense. Oh, well, right. they should have. It was a great yeah. defense. It's a great football team, not just for mm -hmm. a year. We're talking about a three- or four-year run here where they've had very good football teams, especially on the defensive Go, side. Well, let me ask you real quick. This kind of throws things uh, into a little bit of a mix in the linebacking court. We yeah. pretty much know Nate Webster is, is going to be a struggle this year to even play. Very, very much so. But then you've got a Kevin Hardy question, and then and you've got, if, if these guys are that good, how do you get everybody on the field? If, if Landon Johnson needs to play, if Brian Simmons mm -hmm. needs to play, if Odell Thurman needs to play, and if David Pollock needs to play. I, I think what you're going to do is eventually what they want to do is be able to show multiple fronts. Sometimes they're not necessarily going to be just a 4-3 team. They'll, they'll show you the 3-4 look. Uh, they'll put Pollock down on, on, on the ground and, and let him be an end rusher. They'll let him put his hand down that and, and, and go there. They will find the way to get these guys on there. Marvin loves to talk about how yeah. I don't have a middle linebacker. I don't have a weak side. You know what? You know side what? We have linebackers. Right That's old school well, too. Yeah. Well, let's go to your wide receiver <laughs> question. And and Chris Henry out of, out of West Virginia is a guy that's a character question. A guy who got thrown out of a game for uh, throwing the middle finger in a game, and then didn't play his last game of the season. They say they sat down with him. They're satisfied mm -hmm. with everything. Well, with this coaching staff again, is that okay? Well, that's the thing. I mean, this coaching staff gets the benefit of the doubt where that's concerned. If this had been a previous regime, we all would be saying, gosh, you're taking a guy with character flaws and, and you're going to make us try to believe that this isn't going to be a problem. But in watching him play, he didn't really have a great quarterback throw to him. In fact, uh, the quarterback, Rasheed Marshall, was taken today as a wide receiver. He was right. not taken as a right. quarterback, yeah. so he made plays for him. I mean, I watched a bunch of their games, and they, they throw jump balls up to him in just, you know, Hail Mary situations, essentially, sure. and he'd go up and get yeah. it. He's a, he's a heck of a playmaker. I throw this out, and not just the coaching staff, but you have to give credit to the scouting staff. In the last couple of years, while they still have one of the smaller scouting staffs of the, of the, uh, in the league, they have got great eyes who are there. When you have a, you know, you add in a, a Bill Tobin, a Greg Seaman, you know, Bruce Coslett, you know, people may joke about what it, how, how he did here as a coach and everything, but, you know, the guy knows, knows talent. You what? know, John Cooper, the same way. So when they see these guys and they can go back and ask the questions, you know. You sit back and say, okay, Tab, yeah. Tab Perry, we throw that other wide receiver in the, in the sixth round. This is a guy who is a kick returner and can, can throw something into the mix well, as well. Well, I guess, again, that's where you're hoping that, that uh, you know, let's face it, last year sometimes on kickoff returns themselves, they, they weren't as good as you'd like them to be, and hopefully he can provide some of that. And plus, you know, if you're not going to bring Peter Warwick back, and let's just say Kelly Washington struggles, well, again, maybe this kid somehow works his way into the mix. And you know mm -hmm. what? In the end, maybe he does it. He's just there to push some people. Utah's uh, defensive end, Jonathan Fanini, the uh, the seventh rounder. Let's go with the uh, the four and the five, uh, the the guys that they get out of Central Michigan, a center and uh, and an offensive tackle. Um, uh, you're, Again, you want to insert a joke, don't you? I know you do. I mean, you want to insert a joke. That you go to Central Michigan, but this, I guess, is one of those scouting things where they believe these guys are the guys they need. Well, that's mm -hmm. that's what you're hoping for, is that yeah. you you know that you've got guys with some ability. Because we certainly ability. don't know that much about Well, and no, last no, I checked, don't. what bowl did Central Michigan play in this year, and how good was their yeah, offense? Right, their right. offensive line must have paved the way for a lot of it. But again, they gone from here we go back guys. to the benefit of the doubt. I mean, right now with the way what, you know, Marvin's done, when you look at this in, in past years, you've gone, <laughs> two Central yeah. Michigan guys, are you kidding me? But not now. I mean, in, unless they prove otherwise, there's nothing to joke about. Uh, they, had, they had to address the center position. Uh, I know they, you know they really liked uh, uh, Richie Incognito, but he went in the third round yesterday. They addressed it here in the fourth round. They get very good value. You know, Paul Alexander really likes this guy. This guy has played center his entire career. Uh, career. He, he's, he's not a, a tackle moving over to play center. Well, let's um, hope Eric yeah. Gajic is the guy because Richie <laughs> Brame's deal still isn't done at this point. No, it's, it's not. And, you know, if they can bring him back, that's, that's great because you, you love to have a guy like Richie. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Let's hope it's even more than a B or a B minus. <laughs> Harvey, we'll send it back to you. Asked, How would you grade the Bengals draft? In Marvin, you trust. 38% give him an A. Another 35% say you get a B. Thanks if you're one of the more than 600 callers who phoned us here tonight. So here it is, the answer to who am I? 
the first clue. He played with the Bengals from 1982 to 92, uh, 82 to 92. Clue number two, his career stats, 213 games, 365 receptions, 36 touchdowns. And the final clue, might give it away, we told you he was a three-time Pro Bowler. Got a guess? It is tight end Rodney Holman. In addition to his time with the Bengals, he also played with the Lions. We'll see you next Sunday on The Authority. Good night.